In this video, we are going to look at analysis of quicksort algorithm. Before that, it's very important to understand how quicksort algorithm works. And then only you can able to understand this analysis process. So here I assume you already know the logic of this quicksort algorithm. If not, I'm going to provide you the link in the description box and also in the side button. You can check it out there. Now with this code snippet, let us analyze this quicksort algorithm and find out its time complexity. Here, one important thing is it is using a recursion and divide and conquer method. And also it is using partition algorithm. So what this partition algorithm is doing? So this partition algorithm will return the correct location of pivot element. And then based on this location, these two function calls will split the given array into two sub arrays. You can say left and right sub arrays. Now let us consider this array and it's having seven elements. So n is seven. Suppose if I call this quicksort function by passing the index of first and last element, that is I'm passing zero and six. Then this partition algorithm will take this first element as a pivot element. As we discussed in the previous video, this pivot element can be selected in four ways. Either you can select this first element as a pivot element or this last element as a pivot element or you can select any random element as a pivot element or you can select median element as a pivot element. But here this partition algorithm will choose the first element as a pivot element and then this partition algorithm will return the correct position of that pivot element 10. So if you apply partition algorithm by selecting this 10 as a pivot element, then index 3 is the proper place for 10. And then the elements which are smaller than 10 will be in the left subarray and the elements which are greater than 10 will be in the right subarray. If you see here, the array size is reduced from n to n by 2. In both left and right subarrays, we are having n by 2 elements. And then again the partition algorithm will be applied on this two subarrays. So it will take this two as a pivot element and this is the proper position for two. And one will be in the left subarray and nine will be in the right subarray. In the same way it will partition this right subarray by selecting this 15 as a pivot element. And then this is the correct position for 15 and 13 will be in the left subarray and 16 will be in the right sub array. Now we left with only one element and that's it. Sorting is done. So the working of quick sort will be like this and you can call this as a recursion tree. Now if you analyze this recursion tree, what this partition algorithm is doing? It's simply comparing this pivot element with all the elements in the array. So here we are having seven elements. So time taken for this level zero is n. In the same way, time taken for this level 1 together this left and right subarray is almost n. See, in both left and right subarrays, we are having n by 2 elements only. So, partition algorithm will take n by 2 time for this left subarray and n by 2 time for right subarray. So, together this left and right subarray, time complexity for this level 1 is n. And that's it. These are all leaf nodes. Now we know that each level is taking time n. Then what will be the time complexity of this entire recursion tree? So it will be number of levels into time taken for one level. Here time taken for one level is n that we already know. But how many levels will be in a recursion tree when the array size is n that we have to find out. So how this recursion tree is developed? It's simply dividing the array into two subarrays until it left with one element. Here n is the input size and we are keep on dividing the array into two subarrays until it left with one element. Here this k will give you the number of levels. So bring this 2 to the power of k to this right hand side and let's apply log on both sides. Now the value of this log 2 base 2 is 1. So when the array size is n, then the recursion tree will have log n levels. So we will have log n levels and time
time taken for one level is n. So the best case is n into log n. So from this we can conclude that we can achieve this best case only when the partitions are done as evenly as possible. That is in each level both left and right subarray should contain almost same number of elements. See here in this left subarray we are having n by 2 elements and in this right subarray we are having n by 2 elements. Both are having same number of elements. In this situation only we can achieve this best case. So the time complexity is depending on pivot element like how we are selecting the pivot element. If you select the proper element as a pivot element then we can achieve best case. Now let's see the time complexity of worst case. So let us consider this array. Here the elements are arranged in ascending order. So the worst case will occur when the array is already sorted. Now we have to partition this array. So I am going to select this one as a pivot element. So the elements which are less than 1 will be in the left subarray and greater elements will be in the right subarray. Here is there any element less than this pivot element? No. So this left subarray is empty and other than this pivot element everything will be in the right subarray. Again I am going to select this 2 as the pivot element. Is there any other element less than this 2? No. So left subarray is empty. And other than this pivot element, everything will be in the right subarray. Again, I am going to select this 9 as a pivot element. No other element is less than this 9. So left subarray is empty. And the rest of the elements will be in the right hand side. Now 10 will be the pivot element. And no other element is less than this 10. So left subarray is empty. And these three elements will be in the right subarray. Here 13 is the pivot element. And no other element is less than this 13. So left subarray is empty. And these two elements will be in the right subarray. And now 15 is the pivot element. And no other elements will be in the left subarray. And 16 will go in the right subarray. And that's it. Now if you look at here, all the left subarrays are empty. And the entire workloads are in the right subarray. So for partitioning this given array, the partition algorithm will take n time. For this level, left subarray is empty. But here the partition algorithm will take n minus 1 time because it will compare this pivot element with all these elements. Here we are having 6 elements. So n minus 1. In the same way, in level 2, left subarray is empty. So we don't need to do any partition. And to partition this right subarray, it will take n minus 2 time because here we are having 5 elements so n minus 2 for this level partition algorithm will take n minus 3 time and for this level partition algorithm will take n minus 4 time and for this level partition algorithm will take n minus 5 time now what is the total time complexity we have to sum up these times so for this 0th level it will be 7 and for this level 1 it will be 6 and for level 2 it will be 5 and for this level 3 it will be 4 and this level 4 it will be 3 and this level 5 it will be 2. So this is sum of first n natural number but it's not starting from 1 it's starting from 2. So just subtract 1 from it. So in big bo notation we have to ignore the constant term. So it will be n square plus n and you have to consider only the higher order term. So the time complexity of worst case is order of n square. Here the array is sorted in ascending order. If you take the elements in descending order then right subarray will become empty and again we will end up with this time complexity only. Only difference is here the left subarrays are empty but in case of descending order right subarrays will become empty. So when the array is already sorted either in ascending order or descending order instead of selecting the first and last element as a pivot element if you select this middle element as a pivot element then you will end up with best case so quick sort is entirely depending on the selection of pivot element so we have to follow the proper method for selecting the pivot element and that's it if you have any doubt please comment it below and i will see you in the next video until take care and bye bye